Okay, so where we left off, I had it cut me off just as I got to the final piece, which is this little connector, and all it needed was a creaser on the edge. So I'm not going to go back and try to re-record that because it's pretty negligible. Okay, so the next step is carving, and carving is done with the swivel knife, which is this tool here. Yours will probably look different from mine. Uh, mine has this nice rubber ergonomic handle, which is really, really nice if you're going to be doing hours of this day in and day out. And it also has a ceramic filigree blade. Ceramic is the, the white, obviously. And filigree blade may, means it's narrower and also that it's angled very steeply. The knife that you get from AliExpress or from Tandy's when you're just starting out that is going to cost you all five bucks. It's going to have a metal barrel and it's going to have a metal blade that's wider and completely squared off, which is fine. The benefit of the ceramic is that you never have to sharpen it. I've seen people on YouTube uh, strop and sharpen their ceramic blades anyway, but it's not necessary in my experience. If your blade is dragging, just lubricate your leather. It's not a matter of sharpening the blade. Um, and the angled filigree plate there is much better for doing very tight curves. It's not as good for doing uh, straightaways because, it, because it's so narrow, it kind of wants to wobble a little bit more. But with practice, you can do straight lines just fine with the filigree blade. And that means you don't have to be constantly swapping back and forth. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be using the filigree blade, but it's the same process, regardless of what kind of swivel knife you're using. So, people often wonder if they can cut corners with the, the swivel knife, and this is my little PSA to say no, please do not. The swivel knife is probably the most difficult leatherworking tool to master, because the motion of it, the technique of it, is not something you've ever practiced before. There's no transferable skills from other tools that you've used. This is going to be completely new. Um, and you do need to use it properly. I'll explain at the end why you shouldn't be cutting corners. But So the way you use it is you uh, middle finger and thumb around the barrel of it there, and then your index finger goes in that little uh, saddle, and you angle it. You, you put the, the tip that's further from you uh, on the leather, and you kind of angle it away from you and draw it towards you. And this is important because it allows you to put pressure downwards, and you are trying to cut into the leather. So, actually, let's not do that one. Let's do this. So, you just angle it down and then draw it along the leather like so. Um, and that's an easy line, but learning the right pressure to hold it at, because when novices first start with the swivel knife, they're going to do something very shallow. They're basically just going to do a scratch across it, and you that's not going to work for when you go to stamp it later. You actually need to cut a groove into it, so... Um, basically, I would just say press as hard as you can um, while still maintaining control of the knife, obviously, and it will cut as deep as it lets you cut, and that'll do you just fine. Um, that's not for the swivel knife, so those guys are actually done. So my advice uh, for people who are just starting with the swivel knife <clears throat> is to practice, practice, practice. Uh, practice on scrap leather before you start on your actual project, or you will screw it up and be in a world of hurt. Because once you have put, I was talking earlier about uh, putting indentations in the leather, that goes quadruple for the swivel knife. Once you put a cut in the leather, that cut is there to stay, and you can actually kind of see um, how I screwed it up there. I didn't do that line quite right. This will be okay. Uh, when I go to stamp it, the stamp will smooth out that line, but that's not great. That's not a great way to start. That's not a, a good example for you guys. So, and what you do with the swivel knife now is just follow all of that. 
and I'm going to do this piece first. The Lexel that I hit the leather with earlier, this stuff, will make your swivel knifing job a lot nicer. Make, a, make it a lot easier. If your cut lines don't look great, if they're a little bit shallow, if they're a little bit wobbly, that's okay. It'll look better after you've stamped it. Which is not a get-out-of-jail-free card for doing uh, lazy carving, but it's not the end of the world. There is a balance to hit between carving too deep and not carving deep enough. I think novices tend to err on the side of not carving deep enough. They're afraid to put pressure on it. You are not going to cut all the way through the leather, not on 9 ounce, 10 ounce leather. So there's really nothing to worry about there. You would have to make multiple passes in order to cut through it. So. There's nothing to be afraid of. Don't be afraid to cut deep. If you cut too deep, um, then when you go to stamp, your stamp won't compress this leather all the way down to the bottom of the little valley you've cut. And it'll leave a more distinct line than looks good. One thing worth noting is that you can't make multiple passes. So if, say, you cut that line and then you're like, oh, shoot, that's not deep enough that I just kind of scraped the surface, I'm going to go back and make it deeper. You, no, don't, don't, you can't. You've got to cut it deeply the first time because you're not going to cut it precisely in the exact same location. You're going to end up with two kind of wobbly lines that are close, and it just it isn't going to look right. And you can fix that a little bit with stamps. You can stamp down one of the lines, but it looks pretty amateurish. So you want to make sure that you are pressing down very deeply on your first pass. And if your leather is properly cased, then it shouldn't be hard. If you find that you're not cutting deep enough, um, that your swivel knife doesn't want to go in very far, that means your leather is too dry. It means that the core of the leather is still dry and it's not compressing, it's not lubricating the blade when you're trying to slice through it, and you should probably stop what you're doing and go case it better, which means starting over from step one, because if the core of the leather is not wet, that is not a matter of just spritzing the surface, that's a matter of going and re-soaking it and then letting the surface dry out again. If your cut lines, when you're cutting them, so on the flip side of leather being too dry, if your leather is too wet, then your cut lines are going to look kind of puffy. They are going to, the leather is going to drag along the blade as you're cutting and you are not going to get, see what this swivel knife is actually doing, because this is a relatively thick blade, it's about, um, about a sixteenth of an inch thick. You are not just slicing through the leather, you are slicing open the leather. You are creating these little channels here, these little V-shaped valleys that your stamps will then follow. And this is also why you can't use, say, a utility knife, because people ask that sometimes too. They're like, oh, well, I don't have a swivel knife. Can I just use a different kind of knife to cut these grooves instead? And the answer is no, not unless you've got a blade that for some reason is shaped exactly like that, because you want the very kind of wide angle on it. You don't want a very fine razor sharp edge and you also want the blade itself to be very thick so that it pries open these channels. And if your leather is too wet while you're working on it, you will pry open those channels and then it'll just kind of like swell and cloak. So you'll pry open the channels like that. When your knife goes through it, you cut these nice V's, but if the leather's too wet, it'll just kind of like swell up and close again. And that'll cause you problems when you go to stamp it because the reason you want these nice V-shaped channels is because it makes it really easy for your stamps to follow it when you go to bevel it. Like it's, it's a little path that it slides right along. If your cut lines are too shallow, the stamp will not stay in them. It'll walk off them and kind of wander away and stamp where you don't want it to stamp. Okay. 
The other thing people do sometimes, beginners do with the swivel knife, is trying to hold it in a way that is more intuitive to them, but is not correct. So they'll ask, can I, can I hold it like this? Can I hold it like a pen? And the answer is no, because your blade is gonna be coming from the wrong angle. Instead of going like that, you're gonna be kind of going like that, which means you're just making a very superficial scratch over the surface. And also you can't put enough downward pressure. When you're going like this, you're putting downward pressure on the blade. With this, you really can't. Um, so I get that, I get the temptation to use the motion that feels more natural now, but it is shooting you in the foot in the long run. There's a reason the swivel knife is designed the way it is and is used the way it is because it is perfectly designed for the precise job it's meant to do, which is carving leather like this. So just get some practice with it. Practice on a lot of scrap pieces before you try it with your actual project. Get in the habit of pushing down pretty hard. Um, not so hard that you have no control over where the plate goes. Pushing down pretty hard to make these nice channels and to be able to make them in one smooth pass. And also to have control over following the lines that you've traced. Because as you rotate the blade, if you have it, if you have it just kind of rotated off, it's gonna to wanna to drag that way instead of dragging. So you're, you're gonna be trying to pull the knife this way and it's gonna be trying to walk off this way if you've got the blade twisted wrong. Even with the ergonomic barrel, you are going to need to stretch your hands sometimes. Like the stylus, order of operations doesn't matter with the swivel knife. Just make sure that every line you traced does get cut. And keep the swivel knife on hand because odds are really good that in the next step you'll go to stamp all of the lines you carved and find that you missed some. So, all right, so now we'll do all of the lines in the other direction on these little scaly bits that actually look more like hearts, but I think they're supposed to be scales. You can see along the edge here where it's starting to lighten up. That means it is starting to dry. When I finish with the carving here, I'm going to hit it with the Lexol again uh, to help slow the evaporation or slow the loss of moisture because we still have the stamping stage to do, and the stamping stage is the most time consuming. So, like you thought this was bad, uh, no. Generally for these things, uh, the time they take up will be one part tracing, one part carving, and two parts stamping. Uh, sometimes more than that, if the design is particularly complex and you are having to go very slowly around corners, uh, or very slowly around curves or having to change stamps a lot. When you've got things that are mostly straightaways, such as just like going around that line, that will go quite quickly because you can use a large stamp and you can work up a full head of steam. But ones, designs that are much more detailed, you're going to be stopping and starting a lot more. For these scales, you'll see it again when I actually go to stamp it but I have a right angle bevel, like a 90 degree bevel, that I'm going to hit every little corner with before I do the connecting lines. And it makes it very tidy. It doesn't make it any faster than just doing it the normal way, which is kind of beveling the edges and trusting that they'll meet at the corners. And we're done with the large shoulder piece. So, you get the idea. I'm actually going to cut the camera off there because it tends to cut me off after half an hour. But I'm going to be doing the same thing on these four pieces that you saw me do on the others, just basic use of the swivel knife again. And we will reconvene.